I'm so sad. I'm very, very sad my grade nine uh, because today I cannot take you live to talk to you because of some of your fellow learners who have been very, very uh, disrespectful this morning. But do not worry, do not worry. I will be communicating with you via chat box. I will be prompted uh, to, um, to answer. But I'm very, very sad today uh, because we have created a culture of talking a one on one, working together. But uh, we will be working on obviously new strategies on how to make sure that everybody who joins the class is well behaved. So you can still talk, uh, talk to me after class at Mbata X. That will be my Twitter handle at XKIM. That's my Instagram handle. I'm hoping that everybody that uh, we are chatting, I'm coming back to you uh, promptly. So then everyone that I promised to, to forward them my slides via their email addresses, I will do so immediately after today's oh, lesson. Yeah. So grade nines, um, we are going to be uh, forwarding those slides. Uh, we are on, inside the classroom for natural sciences. I'm your presenter, Kolisan Mbata, and you can find me on Twitter at MbataX or on Instagram at XKIM. You can easily direct, direct message me, I will answer. So today, we, uh, I promised you yesterday that today we'll be doing the, the following. Acids and bases, pH value, reaction of acids uh, with bases, reactions of acids with metals. Remember that now, last week we were doing all theory. We were doing all theory. This week it's all application. We are working with equations. We are doing everything. Please uh, type on your chat box there, whatever, in your chat box, I'm sorry, in your chat box there, whatever question you have, please type it in. And then I will see it, and my producer will also see it. We'll, I will get back to you immediately. So those are our topics for today. Then yesterday's homework, I said to define the following terms. Why I always ask you to define the following terms, grade nines. It is important for you for our question one and two, where you have to match column A with B uh, in our test, where you match column A with B, or where they say, I think it's question 1B, uh, mostly in our question papers. It says, um, give the correct scientific term. So if you cannot define these terms, you want to know which term is being defined there. So looking at uh, yesterday's homework, I'm having a bit of a problem with my network, but I will try to work through. So they say to find the following terms, your homework correction, homework one correction, it was combustion. So what is combustion, grade nine? We discussed yesterday that combustion is a rapid chemical, it's a rapid chemical reaction. It's a rapid chemical reaction um, with, uh, with oxygen. So we need to have oxygen there for the reaction to take place. And then that uh, reaction will produce, produces Heat and light, heat and light. Give yourself a mic if you wrote that. Then what is a non-metal oxide? So we know that a non-metal oxide is a compound that is formed, a compound that is formed, that is formed uh, when a non-metal, a non-metal, a non-metal, metal reacts with oxygen with oxygen and then what is galavan uh, galvanizing yes i think i'm correct uh, galvanizing um so galvanizing is to cover so you cover what do you cover to cover steel or iron you galvanize in, in Soweto where I'm from, we say we paint it. <laughs> so you galvanize a steel or iron with a layer, with a layer 
of more reactive of more reactive metal such as zinc so a more reactive metal so now remember that the more reactive metal will obviously need to be galvanized so that it doesn't rust easily so what is a rust grade nine a rust is obviously formed when a steel reacts with oxygen in the presence of water and then we get a rust so we say it's a slow chemical reaction it doesn't rust overnight it that the rust takes time to occur so we say it is a slow chemical it's a lo slow chemical reaction it's a slow chemical reaction uh, of ion of ion with oxygen with oxygen a uh, in the air in the air in the presence in the presence in the presence of water of water how do we represent ion grade nines yesterday we did that ways and course ways james ways everyone else that i was working with yesterday i meet to leader to see and everyone else today but um we said rust is f e two o three remember that that's the rust we spoke about yesterday so it's f e two subscript two and subscript three day and then we have our rust remember that so what are metal oxides grade nines uh, metal oxides um metal oxide as a compound that is formed a compound that is formed that is formed when a metal reacts reacts with oxygen oxygen we clear grade nine yes that's that please write down and if you ask yourself why Mr. Mbata keeps on uh, asking us to define the following terms, it is because Mr. Mbata wants you to know when they ask you to give the correct uh, biological term. Do I have anyone who wants to ask a question? Please uh, write on the chat box there and then I will address your question. I promise tomorrow I will be taking live uh, questions, but today uh, our um, bosses advise us not to take any live questions because we've got learners who open mics actually to swear at the teachers or to actually traumatize the other fellow learners so if you've got any question please write by the chat box i will see it and then i will answer immediately i will address every other question um Pell, and um, please, if I don't see any question, Pell, please tell me if I, uh, I've got any outstanding question that I need to answer. So grade nines, you've defined the following terms. Let us continue uh, with our today's lesson. So today we are doing acids and bases. Last week we discussed that acids and bases work against each other when they react. So when we are reacting acid and a base, they are working against each other. Are we clear? So they do react, but their reaction is not uh, obviously a, a, a harmonious reaction. It is an antagonist reaction. They are going against each other. Acids and bases react against each other. Let us, uh, let us focus on this example. Metal oxides, which is a magnesium oxide, a metal that is reacting with oxygen. So we always get a metal oxide. We've just discussed that. So metal hydroxide, which is sodium hydroxide. So now it's another uh, type of a, uh, a metal, uh, uh, it's another type of a metal. So we've got a metal oxide, a metal hydroxide, and a metal carbonate. I want you to actually now uh, ask your, uh, your questions as a science learner uh, about these types of uh, uh, reactions. What happened? What formed a metal oxide? What formed a metal hydroxide? What formed a metal carbonate? 
Oh, Mr. Mbata is greatly to show you how all that happened. Do you, uh, this is our classwork. I drew this classwork from our last week, um, last week uh, lesson. Grade nine, uh, on your chat box there, write the following answers for the four questions. Um, I will read out your answers before I give you my answers. Do you think orange juice is a strong or a weak acid? Give a reason. Do you think um, orange juice is a strong or a weak acid? Name other acids that we use in our homes. Which are those? Which other acids do we use at our homes? Um, name any example of a base in the house. Name any example of uh, you uh, uh, use in the house. Do you think bleach is a strong or a weak base? So I've already given you that answer. If you can read, you'll see for D. So do you think bleach is a strong or a weak base? Name any of exam a base example in the house. Name other acids that we use in our house. Do you think orange juice is a strong or a weak acid? Give a reason. Do we have any answers? So another question. Acids and bases are all around us. Oh, okay, no. Let us answer the question, the classwork first. Great nines. So do you think orange juice is a strong or a weak acid? Give your answer. So for A, orange juice is a strong acid. Is a strong acid. Because Its pH is less than is less than three in the pH scale. So acid uh, orange is a strong acid. Remember, we said strong acid ranges from one to three. They say to you, name other acids that we use at home. Which acids do you did you did you did you did you mention, grade nine? So I mentioned a gas cool drink. Gas cool drink. Cool drink. Yeah, we say it's a cold drink. It's a cool drink. It's a cool drink. We can also name vinegar. It's also a, a, an acid that we use in our homes, a vinegar. We can also name wine. <laughs> we use wine for cooking, guys. Yes, we do. And we can actually uh, name other things. So if you're not sure, you wrote something that I did not mention, please write in your chat box there to find out what is, uh, is it correct or what. So, I gave you these examples for other households. Then name any example of uh, a base in the house. So a base, um, it's anything uh, that has a pH a value that is above seven. And then the weak bases are between eight uh, to 10 and then 11 to 14 or 12 to 14 actually, yes. And eight to 10, will be your weak basis, 11 to 14 will be your strong basis. So name any example of a base in the house. I did mention to you last week, I said a baking powder. A baking powder is a base. I also said to you, uh, handy Andy, which is ammonia. If you're a science learner, you don't say, mommy, can you use a handy Andy today? You just say, mommy, can you use ammonia? Handy Andy, handy Andy. Um, yeah, I caught it like that. I think I'm correct. It's handy Andy and the bleach is also one of the household um, uh, base and the oven cleaner. There's still a lot more toothpaste. You can count all of them, all of those. 
uh, oven cleaner, it's also your base in the house. So if the question in your exam says, name a uh, bases that sh uh, you found in your household, please name this one and other ones that you will read. Actually, if you take your household uh, contents and then you, you, you read at the back there, you will see uh, that um, this is a base, this is an asset. Do you think a bleach is a strong or a weak asset? What do you think it is? So a, 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 a strong base, a, a strong or a weak base, and a bleach is obviously a, a, a strong base. It's a strong base. Strong base because if you if a bleach touches your black clothes, it changes color and so forth and so on. So it's a strong base. Are we clear, grade nine, with our classwork? Are you clear with our classwork? Write that down. And then I'm waiting for questions, grade nine. I'm waiting for questions. Write in your chat box there any questions. But now we're going to more reactions now. We are going to more reactions of acids and bases so that you can see. So acids and bases are all around us, as you, I've just explained to you, that if you're going to your kitchen, you'll find a baking powder or a vinegar, and you've already talked about a vinegar being an acid and baking powder being a base. We use every day, we use every day without thinking about it. Yes, we do use both acids and bases without even thinking about them every day. The acid in our stomach, helps uh, actually us digest food. You see, you've got hydrochloric acid in your stomach. That's why when you eat, I'm sure everybody has eaten breakfast today. So hydrochloric acid has been at work to actually make you uh, digest the food in your stomach or break down food further in your stomach. Uh, acid also found in food such as fruit and soft drinks, you found acid everywhere. Some of our fruits uh, got uh, what you call acid or others they've got um, a base. So bases are used in soaps and cleaning agents. And then if a base can dissolve in water, we call it an alkali. So if you are asked what is an alkali, you say an alkali is a base that can dissolve in water. Are we clear? If a base can dissolve in water, we call it an alkali. Both acids and bases can be strong or weak. So we have strong acids and weak acids. We've got strong bases and weak bases. Strong acids and bases are very dangerous. If they are strong, those are, are, are very dangerous, both. Regardless of being a strong base, a strong base is dangerous, a strong acid is also dangerous. Strong acids are corrosive. So strong acids are corrosive, that means they are damaging. What is an alkali grade nine? An alkali is if a base can dissolve in water, we say it is an alkali. You know that now. So let me give you examples, acids examples. There we have acids examples there. We have class cool drink. I've already given that in our class, uh, uh, in, uh, in our class work there. Then we've got bases there. Those are my examples. I want you to know this because in your June test, most of you will be writing common tests. So you need to know this. You need to know this. So you have gas, cool drink, oranges, vinegar, and wine. Those are examples of uh, acids. Bases, it's bleach, baking powder, toothpaste, uh, I, got, I counted oven cleaner, um, I counted uh, handy andy, I counted a lot of things. I said ammonia, ammonia is a base. So pH scale, uh, the pH of a chemical substance that can dissolve in water is, measure, uh, is a measure of how acidic or basic that substance is. It tells us how strong or weak acids and alkalis are. So now uh, uh, you all know what is an alkali. So I told you earlier that the pH scale ranges from zero to 14. So from zero to six, those are your acids. Then at seven, it's a neutral point. Um, our still water is neutral. So it's not acidic, it's not basic, it's seven. The pH of water is seven. And then it's neutral. And then eight to 14, those are your bases. So you've got strong bases and weak bases. 
I've explained that concept as well. Then strong acids have the lowest pH numbers, as I said, zero to three, those are your strong acid. It is theoretically possible for an acid to have a pH of zero, which is very deadly. If its pH is zero, we say, okay, it's a deadly acid. We seldom work with the pH values below one. We don't normally work with a zero a pH, you know? We normally work with one and above. But theoretically, we do have acids that are below one, which are zero, and they're very, very deadly. You know what is an indicator by now? An indicator is a dye that has a different colors in, uh, in acids and bases. So an indicator will indicate to us, if we put it in, inside a substance, it will indicate to us, is this substance acidic or it is a base? So we need to know that. We need to know that. Is this an, uh, we use an indicator to tell us, okay, if it changes a color from blue, if it changes a blue litmus paper to red, and then that means uh, it is uh, an acid. If it changes to purple, it is a base. You will do, we'll do a few uh, practicals, maybe next week. I'm still trying to gather a certain, um, what you call, certain uh, chemicals so that we can actually work with our videos on, and then you see how it changes and all that. And then we use chemical indicator to identify whether a chemical is an acid or a base. Indicators are dyes that changes color when they are mixed with acids and bases. I've already explained that. They have one color in an acid and another color in a base. So I told you, if we, let's say we put a blue litmus paper and then we put it in an, in an acid, the blue litmus paper might change, let's say red, and then, or in an acid, and then or it will change, let's say purple, in, an, in a base, uh, what you call solution. So we'll do that sometime next week, if possible. If I manage to get my hands into my school's practicals equipment. Metal oxides and then reactions now. Let us go now. These are, this is very, very important grade nines. Metal, uh, so when we're talking about reactions, that means we are going to react acids and bases now. So we're gonna have compounds reacting, giving us new products. So you need to know this very much so. So metal oxides tend to react as bases. Metal oxides re tend to react as bases. <laughs> so now remember I gave you a, a definition. I said a metal oxide is a compound. Do you understand? So a compound of a metal oxide will react with a uh, uh, an acid. So now, what is it that we're going to get when a metal oxide reacts with an acid? So what is it? Because now we're saying metal oxides tend to react as bases. So in your mind, when you see a compound, magnesium oxide, you see a base. Are we clear? Sodium hydroxide, that is a metal oxide as well. And then you see a, what you call, you see a base. Are we clear? Then you will find your acids like hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. You're gonna have your sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is an SO4. So you 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 will oxidize. So you the acids that we are going to work mostly with your so hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and other acids. But I want you to know these three for now in grade nine. Are we clear on, uh, on that one, grade nine? In then. You know, you see a hydrochloric acid reacting with magnesium oxide, you see an acid with a base, then you already know that you will get sodium and whatever, and not sodium, a salt and water or a salt and hydrogen, you will see as we continue. But it is possible for uh, what you call bases to react as and with ox, uh, with acids and i told you the reaction is always against each other they don't react for the same purpose so we say metal oxides tend to react as bases and then they have the ability to make an acid less acidic so a base when it's reacting with um acid its purpose is to make an acid to be less acidic when acid reacts with metal oxides salt and water forms. So a metal oxide, when it's reacting with acid, the product uh, at grade nine is always a salt and water. It is always salt and water. So you're going to have salt, whatever salt, plus H2O. 
So a salt depends on type of a compound or a type of a metal oxide that reacted with a certain acid. Are we clear? We're gonna get to that now. So it sort of just explained that the type of salt that forms depends on the acid and the metal oxide that is used in the reaction. So now if we've got a certain salt that is reacting, uh, if we've got a metal oxide that is reacting with, a, uh, with an acid, always the answer is a salt and uh, water. It will be salt, that salt and all water. We already know the compound of water is H2O. So there's a general equation. I'm sure you are all, you've already given me a name now that my name is general equation. I love general equation. That's what my learners at school called me. Uh, actually, before lockdown, they called me Mr. General Equation because I believe in saying, if you've got a general equation, we can figure anything out. So you've got metal oxide reacting with acid to give us salt and water. So now, there's a word equation. You know what is a word equation? We've been dealing with that. Magnesium oxide reacting with hydrochloric acid they, to give us magnesium chloride, which is a salt. Magnesium chloride is a salt plus water. Let us see a simple equation. I wish you were here to assist me, grade nines. So magnesium chloride, um, magnesium oxide is M, um, is MgO. MgO reacts with what? Hydrochloric acid. It's HCl. What do we get? What do we get, grade nines? We get magnesium chloride. How do we write magnesium chloride, grade nines? Who wants to show me? Has someone read anything? So we get magnesium chloride. Are we clear? Plus water. What is the compound for water is H2O. Can you see it's grade nine? Yo, I want you to understand this because you will work with this until you become a chemical engineer, until you become a doctor, until you become a nurse, until you become a biochemist, until you become a teacher like myself. You need to know this, it will never change. Looking at them, Michaela, please uh, type uh, in your chat box so that I can answer you. Type on your chat box so that I can answer you. Our mics are not uh, permitted today. So you've got magnesium chloride reacting with hydrochloric acid to give us magnesium chloride plus water. So what is happening there, grade nines? We need to balance this equation. <laughs> I'm sure most of you don't like me now when we, I talk about balancing the equation. So if you look at our oxygen, we've got one on the left, um, on the right, and then we also have one on the left. Let us look at our hydrogen now. We've got two hydrogens on the right and one on the left. Let us look at our chlorine, which is Cl. Uh, we've got two on the on the right and one on the left, and then magnesium is one one. So, but our we are concluding that our what you call our equations are not balancing. So we need to balance. So I'm going to put to make sure that our hydrogens. Let us first start with our hydrogens. So our hydrogens are two this side and this side is one. So we're gonna put a coefficient two here. We're gonna put a coefficient two. And then now we have two hydrogens on the left and two hydrogens on the right. We have two chlorines on the left. Yes, we have two chlorines on the right. So we can conclude and say our, our equation is balancing. Are we clear grade nine? So looking at the general equation, look at the general equation. The metal oxide reacts with an acid to give us salt and water. For example, weight equation, magnesium oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid 
and it gives us magnesium chloride, which is a salt, and water. Water is H2O. You already know we dealt metal oxide. When we're talking about magnesium oxide, you already know uh, it's going to be Mg reacting with oxygen and then gives us MgO. So you know what is a magnesium oxide. Then hydrochloric acid, there is a, a HCl. Then magnesium chloride is MgL, is MgCl2 and plus H2O because we said it's salt plus water. And I told you it depends on the compound or on a metal oxide that is reacting with an acid. What type of salts are we going to get? Are we clear grade nines? And then there we go. If you've got any questions, please uh, let me know. Uh, then Hi. yes. Um, Michaela asked, why do we add a two to C I or C L to the C L C I? Okay, let me explain to Michaela. Michaela, remember that um, that uh, initially we discussed that uh, C L is a what you call is a diatomic molecule. Remember that. Is it a diatomic molecule? Yes. Cl is a diatomic Cl yes, chlorine. It's a non-metal and it's a diatomic molecule. So that's why we're getting a magnesium chloride there. It's a magnesium chloride. So it's a type of a salt that we have. No, raise the hand. Uh, please type no, and then my producer will obviously ask me again. Uh, I will come back to this one if you've got questions with this one. But um, I want you to write down this <laughs> homework before I can continue. I want you to write it down. We've got um, write down, uh, write weight equations. So pre uh, predict reactions between hydroxide, which are bases and acids. So we've decided, uh, we've concluded due to our notes that uh, hydroxides are bases. So write down this quest th these questions. It's what we will be working with tomorrow. So my, 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 my lesson tomorrow will be based uh, in balancing the equations of the reactions between hydroxides and acids. That will form a huge part of my actually uh, my first my, my, my first part of the lesson tomorrow. And again, tomorrow I will be taking live calls, uh, not for live calls, but live interaction. I will be interacting with you uh, uh, tomorrow into balancing this, into understanding when acids are reacting with bases, and know that hydroxides act as bases. Then I told you that you need to know nitric acid, you need to know hydrochloric acid, you need to know sulfuric acid. So please jot down this, or you can actually visit our website after class, www.africateamgeeks.co.za. So you've got sodium hydroxide and nitric acid. What are we going to get? We are going to get salt and water. We've got calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. And what are we going to get? We're going to get salt plus water. <laughs> We've got magnesium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. What are we going to get? We are going to get salt and water. Potassium hydroxide and uh, hydrochloric acid. What are we going to get? We are going to get salt and water. We are going to get salt and water. So you need to actually know what type of salt are we going to get. And thereafter, you balance the equation grade nine. Please do not embarrass me, you know, when you go back to your schools and you don't know how to balance an equation, but you were taught by Mr. Mbata. Um, you need to know how to balance an equation after this. Then um, you've got magnesium hydroxide, and sulfuric acid as your homework. Let me do this one for you, grade nines. Can I do this one? Magnesium and uh, my magnesium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Uh, potassium hydroxide and 
hydrochloric acid. Huh? Which one must I do for you? No, we'll do all of them tomorrow. Uh, aluminium hydroxide and actually a uh, hydrochloric acid, you will know tomorrow how we actually do it. So in our next lesson, grade nine, we're gonna do uh, metal carbonates. So we know that metal carbonates are compounds consisting of a metal and a carbonate, e.g. calcium carbonate, it's CaCO3. So a carbonate, it's a carbon bonded with three oxygens. It's a metal, it's a, it's a carbon bonded with three oxygens. Remember that, it's a discrete two, that one, um, and a subscript three. I'm sorry, it's not discrete, but it's a subscript three. And then uh, we have this explanation there. I was explaining to you how are they formed again. So the ion carries a negative electric charge of minus two. It has a formula CO3, and then a carbonate ion consists of a carbon atom and three oxygen atoms bonded together and then uh, that's what is going to happen there um i'm sure you are understanding grade nines um pearl my producer yes polisami mm, do you mind if we take a leap of faith so that they can ask a few questions because i know this section is very confusing i'm even scared of continuing because i'm scared if they are not understanding Okay, we can try. Yes, let's try. Let's try. Any questions? You can open your. You I will open. unmute. I'll unmute for them. You'll just tell me who. Okay, so you raise your hand if you've got any questions before we move forward, so that uh, my producer will unmute you. Let us please raise your hand if you've got any questions. Raise your hand. Raise your hand concerning what we've dealt with. Please. Where is Michaela? Are you still there? Or anyone who wants to ask any question? Anyone who wants to ask any question? Raise your hand right now so that we can actually deal with the question. Or concerning the homework, actually, uh, we can, you can ask me any questions concerning the homework. Sise Ngubane raised a hand, uh, Pearl. Sise Ngubane, raise the hand. Um, hi, sir. Hi, Sise, how are you? I'm good, and you? I'm good. Please ask Mr. Mbata any question. Um, I want to ask concerning the homework. Please show yes. again, I didn't see it. No, it's on screen right now. Okay, thanks. Thanks. And, uh, Sise, uh, again, you can touch base with me on Instagram, right? I did, but you didn't ask. You didn't answer me. I'm sorry. I'll look into it just now. I'll, I will answer you. Okay. Thank you, Cecilia. Anyone else? Anyone else uh, concerning the today's lesson? Because this is uh, the, the, the 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 interesting part of chemistry, grade nines. This is the interesting part of chemistry, grade nines. Do you have any questions so far? Raise your hand, and I will uh, I will address it. Where is Mkosi? Where is Chulile? Where is James? Where is everyone else? Where is Khan? Okay, uh, in the, uh, seemingly that we don't have any uh, further questions, grade nine. Let me uh, close our lesson uh, by saying to you, in our next lesson, as I've explained that we'll look at that, and then we'll also focus on our skills focus as in like asking a testable question. So you will deal with what is a testable question. So as a science learner, you need to know what is a testable question. And then you also look at um, how to write a testable question. And tomorrow though, this is what we're gonna be looking at and uh, how to choose that testable question. We will be doing it tomorrow. Please follow this helpful link. Uh, for you to get more on what you are dealing with today, grade nines. And uh, yeah, I will definitely uh, see you tomorrow, grade nines. Uh, please tell, let us continue the conversation in um, acids and metal oxides or in acids and bases uh, tomorrow and uh, 
throughout our social media pages. Uh, our social media pages are obviously uh, at Africa Teen Geeks, or you can find us on social media at Africa Teen Geeks, at Azura, at Basic Department of Education South Africa, hashtag Sasol Foundation, at Sasol SA, or you can hashtag us at STEM Champions. I have a great day, Feather Grade Nines. I see you tomorrow. I'm out of here. Thank you so much, Pep. My pleasure. Katleho says bye. Bye, Katleho. Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh, shame. Let's unmute for the, uh, the goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. 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 bye.